Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Vivid Creative Sydney for having me. I think uh, Creative Sydney is an amazing project and uh, I think you're very lucky to have it here in Sydney and maybe Jess and I can talk about making it happen in Perth one day. Um, I'm from Perth. I love being from Western Australia. I think we've got a lot of things going on over there. One thing, what started over there was Future Shorts. Can I have a hands up of who already knows about Future Shorts? Are you getting there? Are you getting there? Cool. So, I'll just do a little bit of a, a backtrack as to how it all started here. So, I went off and did the travel thing and went to Prague and drunk copious amounts of amazing Czech beer and then fell into the film industry by mistake because I spoke English, purely because I spoke English, um, and was able to travel around to a lot of film festivals and learn a lot of things, probably more than I could have learnt in Australia in an institution. And you know what it's like when you come back from travelling and you just feel like everything's just a little bit boring. <laughs> Especially when you go travelling and then for some reason you choose to live in the most remote city in the world. So um, I didn't know really what I was doing in Perth and uh, so I started to work for the Revelation Film Festival there and it became pretty apparent to me that we had quite a lot of great local films that didn't know how to export themselves to the film festival, to the industry, to the rest of the world. Um, so I began at Mitchko Films and our core motives in this is about exporting Australian content to the rest of the world and bringing amazing content back to Australia so we don't feel so removed from everything. We are culturally in touch with what's happening. So after about a year of setting up Amitchko Films, which was originally a marketing consultancy service, filmmakers would come to me with a finished film going, what do I do next? I've gone to uni, I've learned how to make films, I don't know how to do the festival thing, I don't know how to sell a film. And that's how we still operate. We still do consultancy. We run a micro-cinema event once a month called Cinema in a Cave in Perth. And we manage future shorts across Australia. And what I mean by we is we're still a start-up company. It's me and a couple of volunteers. So I get pretty tired sometimes. Um, before I go into talk about future shorts too much, I want to just show a little video because the videos are probably better than me trying to explain it. So that's future shorts. Uh -huh. <laughs> My name is Fabian, I'm the founder and director of Future Shorts. We're a distribution company, but also a global film event interested in other ways of watching films. Future Shorts is the largest short film channel on YouTube, representing the boldest and most creative filmmakers around the world. It's more than just a global event. We're looking to create a culture around short film and a global conversation of people talking, commenting and discussing. Greetings from freezing Finland. Hi, we are Future Shorts Ukraine. Hi, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm La. And together with a team of volunteers, we run Future Shorts Vietnam. Uh, we have uh, only one slot in TV that shows short films. So that's why Future Shorts is very important to us. We are also about to launch the next stage of Future Shorts with Future Shorts 1. Hi, I'm, I'm Hamish. I'm the global producer of Future Shorts 1. One is a simultaneous event taking place in 12 countries and 50 cities worldwide bringing together a mass audience in a single participation, celebrating culture, community and connectivity. Hey, I'm Amy in Perth. I run Future Shorts for Australia. Hi, this is Mishra from Future Shorts Poland. Something that's really significant about it for us is the ability to feel a part of a global community and part culturally of what's happening in the rest of the world. Future Shorts represents the boldest, most inventive filmmakers in the world and we're interested in giving them the widest possible audience. Today we're going to be showcasing some of the four filmmakers that are featuring in the next stage of our festival. Hi, my name's Tom and I'm the programmer here at Future Shorts. The four films we've selected are The Lost Tribes of New York, Words, Le Café and The Answer by Uncle. Paper! Words is a beautiful little film about how words can have different meanings in different contexts. Almost look like lightning in themselves, you know, the effect of Uncle's lightning. Uncle's The Answer follows a psychedelic journey through the mind of Ray Winston and his experience of being struck by lightning. It's made by the acclaimed director of The Road, John Hilco. When they listen, when they the Lost Tribes in New York is an animated study of the various facets of New York society, directed by a husband and wife duo. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, How are you? We're London Square Productions. Hi, I'm Andy. This is Carolyn. I'm Carolyn. We're the Londons. It came Londons. about from living in Harlem. We started to just feel that a lot of the street architecture had a lot of character and a lot of personality. Le Café is an animation produced by a top French film school. Its frenetic pace makes you think about where you're going to get your next kick. 
We feel that these films are a great representation of the kind of innovation, creativity and forward thinking that define the Future Shorts YouTube channel. Marvelous. From London to Moscow, Berlin to Melbourne, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and beyond, Future Shorts is about bringing together communities, ideas and thinkers everywhere around short film. And what we're interested in is creating a platform for filmmakers to get their work seen and to get people inspired to make more films. Future Shorts is a community of passionate people everywhere. We want you to be part of it. I think Fabian summed it up best there. Future Shorts is a community of passionate people everywhere. It hasn't taken huge amounts of money or experience to set this up, um, but what the concept is, is amazing, and it's changing because people everywhere are going, I want more. I want more from the cinema. I want more from the TV programming. I don't want to watch the YouTube films by myself. I want to be a part of something bigger. And so it's screened across 60 cities throughout 16 countries, and it's people like you and me that can host screenings. It's as basic as a data projector and white sheets in some areas. Um, we've just signed up a new WA town in the centre of WA that has 400 people, and they've just signed up to do monthly screenings, and they have a venue of 270. I don't know why a town of 400 people has a 270-person venue, but cool. Two screenings, everyone in the town can watch Future Shorts. <laughs> Um, so just to recap on that, Future Shorts is an online label. We have a YouTube channel which receives 42 million hits a year, so it's quite epic already. Um, and it started in 2003 because Fabian was a short filmmaker and he wanted life through his short films beyond the festival circus circuit. He wanted to see um, short films being respected that weren't just a pathway to make a feature film, that they were their own artistic right. And now with um, YouTube and all of that, short film has actually become the most accessible way to watch a film worldwide, based on more people have a mobile phone with internet capabilities than being able to go into a cinema. So potentially short filmmakers could be reaching a larger audience than any other entertainment. Uh, I can't remember what I've written here, excuse me. Uh, so we started in June 2010, last year, so it's our one year birthday this week, and we started in Perth. And it was because I sat on Google for about two days trying to find where a future short screening was in Australia, and I couldn't find anything. So I began six months of badgering um, future shorts, and badgering is really underrated, you get actually quite a lot done. Um, so after several annoying emails, I think they wanted to launch in, in Melbourne or Sydney first, and I was like, no, Perth. So they eventually caved, and that's us on our first thing. Um, on our first gig, we had 250 people down to Fremantle to launch the event. Um, our programming here, we're, we're quite unique in the way that we program. Uh, we have Tom and Fabian going to the Sundancers, the Cannes. They know where to get the short films from. But also every partner around the world is acting as a scout. So I look out for films in Western Australia and Australia, and we then pass them on to London. And we just found out this week that actually a little tiny film uh, in WA that we screened is now being considered for the global program. So it's, it's an import and an export facility as well. So any filmmaker can be involved in this. You can also go onto Without a Box and submit your film that way. Or talk to a promoter. If you know a local promoter who's doing Future Shorts, start hassling them. Uh, so this is Future Shorts Esperance, little country towns representing. Uh, what are we up to? So in March this year, we went nationally. We went from one screening a month in Perth. We're now doing 10 screenings monthly. The regional areas have really taken up. It's been fantastic. This is Bunbury. Last month we had 100 people in Port Hedland, and if anyone knows Port Hedland, it's a BHP mining town. So the miners are coming out and watching Future Shorts. That's a picture. Every quarter they get involved in a community art market and they put Future Shorts to it as well. We really like the idea of community and live action going on. So in Perth we have a poet, a comedian, a band each month come along. Uh, they do the community screenings. In Esperance they do meal and cinema. Uh, deal. So yeah, as much involvement that we can get as part of the screening, we really try to celebrate that. Uh, just what I was mentioning about the live music. That's a gig in London there. Where am I up to? 
We also do a variety of special events. We'll partner up with uh, bands on their re latest releases. So, for example, we had uh, Uncle and Massive Attack release all of their premiere films for their latest album online, which, as you can imagine, contributed to the 42 million hits. We also team up with uh, music festivals throughout the summer season in the UK. So they had Love Box um, in their chill-out tents there. They also just joined with museums across the UK to do 12 screenings within museums. So we're all about taking cinema out of the dull rooms where there's a mass exodus that happens after the film and about building creativity and experiences to go along with it and really celebrating the art form. I don't think film is celebrated as enough because we're asked to give over our senses and pay full attention to that and that means that we can't necessarily talk, we can't go to the bar, we can't have a conversation around the film. So these live events are about expanding that experience and really having a sense of belonging through the live experience and also the online and the social media. So you can go onto Facebook right now and have a look for Future Shorts Australia and sign up and start contributing to everything that's happening. What are we up to? There you go. There's all of our locations that we're currently at. Um, in conversations right now with another seven locations. Melbourne will join the network in October. If anyone knows anyone in South Australia or Northern Territory, please put me in contact. I'd love to see Future Shorts start there. Um, but that's it. Come along. We've got a screening next week as part of the Creative Sydney program at the Fox Studios. There'll be a live band playing as well as uh, two-for-one drink deals. It's a really fun night. So come along. Check us out online. I hope to see you at a future short gig soon.